Double uh, HF World Championships happening right now in Riga, Finland, and Tampere, Finland. Now, uh, Archer Silovs, you know I wanted to talk about him. Archer Silovs' first game of this tournament was not the starter for Latvia against Canada. Uh, the starter, name slipping my mind right now, lets in two goals within the first five minutes. Silovs goes in and clean up duty, gets them out of the first period despite facing some power plays in that first period from the Canadian side. Turns them all aside, shows really well in that game, starts the next game, which is a back-to-back, and then yesterday, Latvia picking up their first win against Czechia uh, at the IHF World Championship. First win of the tournament for them, uh, and first win against Czechia uh, in the history of Latvian men's hockey. So um, that was really cool to see, and we, we have the clip here. Archisilovs with a huge save. This forced overtime. Um this was going to be the goal that put Czechia in front and basically broke Latvia's back because Latvia was bending but not breaking, uh, thanks largely in part, I would say, to the play of Archer Silovs. This kid's impressive, Chris. This kid's impressive. I, I've been talking about him since he was 13, it seems. And I just, you know what? Like, it, it, to, to an extent, it's a bit, sure. Pe- people get it. People like when I joke around about it. But in all seriousness... Like, this kid could start NHL games next year. And I, I've said it before. Fire up the Arty Party music, by the way. Uh, I've said it before. With Archer Silovs, I've said it. This guy's going to play NHL games. And if there's an injury to Demko next year, he's going to play with Spencer Martin. That's what we're going to see next year. Yeah, I think that's the interesting thing. I like that. He likes the sound of that. Uh, but Archer Silovs to... We could talk about the goalie situation. Like I said, I didn't really prepare for today's show that much. So I, I think we should well, talk about that. I, I, I got this something. Is, this, I got something. This is old yeah. school. No, with... Okay, well, I want to talk about the goaltending situation. Do you want to get to something first there with the back? Because I, I wouldn't mind spending some time on the backup situation. That, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about is I yeah, wrote about it today over at Canucks Army. We're going to talk goal te- goaltending. And you were the one, just for the record, that wanted to talk about this. So no, uh, no, this no. is an old school Canucks convo is what you were about to say because neither of us did any prep today. And this is how we used to do the show is just, just sit in a room and talk. So let's talk. Uh, let's no, talk hold about on. The back None of us did any prep. put that video in there of Archer Silovs. Come on. I'm still doing prep. Well, I got graphic. Alex knows. All right, all right. This is the least amount don't, of prep you've done. Don't in that the sinking live show. ship that you're sitting on. I'm not going on that. I don't know. Okay, let me talk here. I wrote a 1500 word article for Canucks Army today. It's up now. Looking at all of the UFAs and the RFAs that the Canucks have coming up. And it's an interesting list because the RFAs, look, you, you and I talked about this before the show began. It seems like Travis Dermott and Carson Foe are going to be the only ones that are gone from the RFA group. Canucks have seven RFAs. We expect them to extend a qualifying offer to Vitaly Kratsov, Ethan Bear, Akito Hirose, Niels Hoglander, and Jet Wu. As the offseason goes on, we'll talk about these guys more. But the one guy I want to talk about is Colin Delia, who is an unrestricted free agent, along with Kyle Burrows and Michael Furlan. I expect the Canucks to walk away from all three of these. And we'll talk about Kyle Burrows another time, I'm sure. But Colin Delia, let's hone in on him because a lot of people have thrown out the idea of, well, he finished the season so strong, so maybe he can come back and be the third goaltender. I think one thing that's gone a very heavily under the radar, Chris, is the Canucks signing of European free agent Nikita Tolopilo from the Alsvenskan League. This guy took such a massive step in the Al Svenskin this season, putting up a 924 save percentage compared to an 898 the season prior playing for the same team. Phenomenal goaltender. The steps he took this year, I know for a fact the Canucks are extremely high on him, if only for the fact that what he did this year is such a massive step. And there's reason to believe that not only can he play AHL games, but that he might be able to take that extra step next year and see what they can do with his game and you know if their Canucks are targeting a goaltender Ian Clark thinks he can do something with him right so I, I think a lot of people are kind of letting it go under the radar a little bit too much because they're looking at okay what's the goaltending situation going to look like to me the answer is pretty simple like I think Abbotsford is going to be a developmental hotbed for goaltenders next year I think we're going to see the 23 year old Nikita Tolopilo start alongside Archer Silovs I think these guys are splitting starts next year Chris I don't think it's a a, a bona fide starter and a bona fide backup I think it's a 1A 1B situation between these two like Tolopilo has something to prove coming into next year right and 
look, he's going to be someone that we're going to keep an eye on. And I think it's kind of going under the radar a little bit too much. So I wanted to make sure I brought it up. I think that's how you're going to see that shakedown uh, in Abbotsford next year. And with that, Spencer Martin is your NHL backup. Like that that's all it comes down to is, look, they're paying Spencer Martin a one-way contract, which means he's making the same amount regardless of where he plays. His salary next season is $775,000. Cap it is $750,000. 775 is a lot to pay a backup goaltender in Abbotsford. Because, hey, let's face it, Chris, they want Archie Seelofs to start games, right? If you're going to have Tolapilo as well, you want him to play games as well. Those are your two goaltenders that you're trying to develop. Spencer Martin has shown that he can be an NHL backup. All of the criticisms of Martin came when Thatcher Demko went down, and people really don't understand how different the mindset is for a goaltender when you know there's that you're the guy, basically, right? Like that 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 does weigh heavily on goaltenders. I'm not trying to say Spencer Martin's mentally weak or anything like that. I'm just saying that Spencer Martin showed that he can be an NHL backup, and it's not like he just forgot how to play goal this year right you know although it might have seemed like that in his final 10 games the nhl or whatever people want to say he went down to the ahl and he worked hard like he worked hard to re get his game back and i know a lot of people look at it and say well Del delia was the guy that finished out the season in vancouver so the canucks probably want to keep him around no it was so that martin could play a lot and get his confidence back and hey I i'm fully expecting to see martin be the backup i don't think this team that's already strapped for cash or excuse me i shouldn't say cash cap like salary cap i don't think we're going to see them sign a goaltender this offseason chris and i definitely don't think we're going to see them re-sign colin delia yeah i think there's too many options that could potentially work to go and make a splash on something that you think will hopefully work like that feels a little bass backwards to me they have spencer martin who listen <laughs> the way the canucks are playing like, think about it spencer martin I, I don't correct me if i'm wrong didn't have a start under uh or no he please started for um for talk it right like he did get some stars i can't even remember how many he got but not a ton uh i have to look this up but uh i think spencer martin's gonna be the backup because think about yeah he had a bad year last year he was also thrust into a starters position on a team that was horrible defensively like absolutely horrible the amount of scoring chances he would give up it's funny to me like watching because you know i went to every game every home game except for that week when i had covid but you can see the plays develop and you're like, hey, there's a goal coming right here. Like you can see it a, a couple seconds ahead of it coming in. And it happens so consistently with, you know, Spencer Martin and net and the way the Canucks were playing defense early on in the season that I think this guy needs to at least be given an opportunity to be the backup under a new structure a new standard, a new habits Vancouver Canucks team that's coming in next year because everything's going to change and be better. Um, I, I, I think you have to give Spencer Martin that opportunity first. And if it, doesn't go well you're right you brought up the two young players and both of them should be given an option hey think about what a backup goaltender is going to do he's going to play once every two weeks right once every two weeks probably like with, with thatcher demko the way he's going maybe 10 days whatever it is you have no problem with two guys down in the ahl who are on entry-level contracts who don't require waivers you can move these guys around very easily. And Archer Silovs has already proven at the point where it's like, hey, if you have to play him for nine games next year, you're pretty comfortable with that. This Tolapilo kid, you got to see him for four or five games before you can even make an assessment. Spencer Martin takes up, you know, 10 to 20 games early on in the season. Even if he sucks in those games, you just go to the other option. Like they're they're the going out and signing a backup that you really like as the the guy and you're gonna pay him two and a half million. No, go get a defenseman that makes two and a half million. Go get a center for your third line that makes that money. The money can be used in a much better position than just spending it on a backup that you're feeling super confident in. And, and even at the same time, it's not like, like how much confidence can you really have in a veteran backup, right? It's, it's like, it's not like that guy's going to save how bad the Canucks defense has been throughout the past couple of years. So uh, it'll be, I think they have the options in house. I don't think they need to go out at all. I don't think it's really should be on the radar of management. 